Nobody wants to see black people in movies. They want to see both white and black people in movies without one being singled out as different from the other. Plenty of films cast black people in them just so they can satisfy the progressive crowd who don't care about how good the movie is as long as it has more minority actors than white actors. Maybe one of these days we can see society distinguish the actors on screen not by the color of their skin, but by the quality of their acting. And trust me when I say you can be black or white and still be a shitty actor. And you think I'm a coward? You're wrong! Today, however, I wanted to examine an early example of the placement of a primarily African-American cast in a film without detracting from the movie's overall quality. The movie I'm talking about is Good Burger, the 1997 Nickelodeon-made film brought to us by the critically acclaimed Dan Schneider. Good Burger released in the same year as another movie with a primarily African-American cast, Jackie Brown. However, while Jackie Brown attempted to earn extra brownie points by having a female lead, Good Burger doesn't rely on such trickery to win over a wider audience. Good Burger is good at being a film, not at being diversity bait. Also, Good Burger has less foot fetish propaganda. Good Burger's story centers on Ed, an employee at Good Burger who is the absolute epitome of friendly fast food service, and the less than optimistic Dexter, who is forced to work at Good Burger to pay off his debts to Professor Sinbad. Good Burger becomes a second home for Dexter, mostly due to his friendship with the lovable Ed and his budding relationship with the strong black female Monique. Other Good Burger protagonists include Dan Schneider himself as the restaurant's manager, proving for good that Dan the man does indeed enjoy a variety of feet and not just the underage white kind. Also working at Good Burger is Abe Vigoda, who in my headcanon was not actually killed in Godfather and changed his name in order to lay low by working at a fast food establishment. Our African American brothers are having a jolly swell time at Good Burger, until the wicked fascist Mondo Burger appears across the street and begins stealing customers away. Ed and Dexter attempt to expose Mondo Burger for placing steroids in their meat, but there's a twist. It turns out that Mondo Burger was secretly a sanctuary for Hillary Clinton and John Podesta to solicit child sex slaves to the black market, and the meat in the Mondo Burgers was actually the meat of any children who resisted, proving that it was not Comet Ping Pong Pizzeria, but Mondo Burger. This part was unfortunately cut from the film's final release, and only people who have direct connections to Dan Schneider himself, like me, can ask him the truth. At the end of the day, Good Burger is a story about capitalism about respecting your position in the workplace hierarchy, and about eradicating any competition to your ability to make profits. Considering this film was made years after the Reagan era, I think it's very progressive in its way of highlighting these economic policies that many people now frown upon in our communist society. I am so happy we have a film like Good Burger that relies on the strength of its characters without overemphasizing the fact that they're African American. It could have been so easy to turn this film into a bleeding heart outcry against social inequality and discrimination against POCs in the workplace, but Dan Schneider did not allow that to happen. He, along with the combined comedy powers of Keenan and Kel, delivered a groundbreaking achievement in cinematic progress. One that didn't lose its integrity and settle for cheap and uninspired race jokes that would only detract from- Is it because I'm black? Fuck everything I just said. Good Burger is cancelled.